What's up guys, in today's tutorial we're going to be making an automatic gun, or at least turning our pistol into an automatic gun I should say. This video assumes that you've already followed along with my first gun tutorial, if you haven't you can go ahead and watch it right up here, however this tutorial is simply just going to be turning our gun that we already have into a more automatic pistol. So to start off, let's go over right up here inside of our workspace to where we have our gun tool, and we just want to open this up and let's go to the local script. Now with the local script, this is where everything is being handled on the client. Let's just go ahead and double click on this to open it up and we can get scripting. So the first thing where we're going to want to do just right up here underneath our user input service variable is we just want to create a brand new variable using the local keyword. And we're going to say local run service is going to be equal to game colon get service parentheses quotation marks run service just like this. If you don't already know, run service is a service that Roblox provides for us that gives some cool time management methods and a few new events like stepped, heartbeat, render stepped, and stuff like that. So we can use this for more time management related things. After that, let's go right down here to the bottom of our variables and we just want to say local holding and this is going to be equal to false to start off with. This variable we're going to be using to determine whether or not the player is holding down the click on their mouse. Now beneath this holding variable, we're going to need another one for our last shot. And this is going to be equal to zero. So this variable is going to keep track of the last time the player fired a shot. And we're just initially saying that to zero because we're going to be updating it a little later. After that, let's go ahead and make another variable for our shot delay. And this is going to be the delay time in between the player can shoot again. So for me, I'm just going to put this at about 0.1 seconds. Oops, I forgot an equal sign. This will be equal to 0.1. So this will be the time in seconds that the player has to wait in between every single shot. For me, since it's a very automatic weapon, I'm just going to choose 0.1 instead of something like 1 or 2 or something very drastic like that. Next, we want to come down here to our tool.activated connect function. And here's where we want to actually remove all the stuff inside of this, this whole if statement right here, and just press Control and X or right click and press cut. What this is going to do is just going to remove all of our code that we had inside of there and we can paste it again a little later. So we're just going to drop down a few lines up here and we're going to create a brand new local function. And we're just going to call this shoot with parentheses. When we press enter and now we can get coding our function. So we're going to say local time will be equal to tick with parentheses. If you don't know what tick does, it returns the amount of time in seconds since the Unix epoch according to this device's time, which is a set time from a long time ago. Now we're going to check if time minus the time that our last shot was shot at is greater than or equal to our shot delay then. So what this is doing, it's checking if the time that it currently is minus the time it was since we last fired a shot if that time since we last fired a shot is greater than or equal to the delay time that we need to wait in between the times that we just shot basically then it's going to let us continue on with our function so if that has happened then we're going to say last shot will be equal to time we just want to update that and then here's where we get to paste all that code that we had since earlier and that should work perfectly fine now down here inside of our tool.activated connect function, you just want to say tool.activated connect parentheses, and this will be our shoot function. So now this is going to connect to this function right up here whenever our tool gets activated. Pretty much doing the same thing it was doing before, but this time it's used inside of a local function, so that way we can call it whenever we need to down here. So now inside of our user input service .input began function, we just want to say else if right inside this if statement right here we're going to say input object dot user input type is equal equal to enum dot user input type dot mouse button one then what this is going to do is going to check if the player is pressing down the mouse button one or in this case the left click and if they are then we're going to call our shoot function to make sure that they're shooting and then we're going to turn our holding variable, it will be equal to true, just like this. And then let's go down a few more lines. We're going to say user input service dot input ended. So now whenever an input is going to end instead of beginning like it is up here, we're going to connect parentheses a function with more parentheses. And this is going to take input as a parameter 
and whether or not the game processed an event. So what this game processed event does, it's similar to this is typing right up here. In fact, it's the exact same thing. It'll basically just check whether the player is texting or typing inside of the chat or inside of a text button that we have somewhere inside of your GUI maybe. We just want to make sure that this function doesn't run whenever they press a button while they're typing basically. Now let's press enter to drop down a line. So inside of here we're going to write if game processed event or if they are typing like up here, then we're just going to return end because we don't want them to call this function whenever they're typing. However, if our input dot user input type is equal equal to enum dot user input type dot mouse button one, then we're going to change our holding variable will be equal to false, just like this. So when the player holds down their left click, we're going to change the holding variable to true, which will just determine whether or not the player can shoot or not. Otherwise, once they let go of it and that input has ended, then we're going to change our holding variable to false. Now down here, we just want to use our run service variable that we created a while ago. We're going to say run service dot render stepped colon connect with parentheses. And we're going to choose another function with more parentheses. Now we're just going to check if holding is equal equal to true, then we are going to call our shoot function. Now what this is going to do is going to call our shoot function for every time that holding is equal to true, basically each time this loops. And we'll know that holding will be equal to true for as long as the input is being held down. So as long as they're holding down mouse button one. Once they let go of that, of course, holding will be equal to false. So we will no longer be calling the shoot function anymore. Now up here, we kind of have sort of a debounce setup with the time and the last shot and the delay right here. I already explained how that works, but this is pretty much in summary that whenever we hold down mouse click, then this holding variable will be set to true. When we let go of it, the holding variable will be set to false. While holding is set to true, then we're going to shoot every time that our gun can shoot because of this time variable and this delay up here. So that's pretty much how it works. It was pretty simple to set up. Let's go ahead and click on play and test it out. Now let's go over and grab our gun right here and let's try holding down click. So let me just hold down click real quick. And you can see the ammo in the bottom right depleting and I'm just holding down click. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but I was just holding down click right there and you can see my ammo is depleting just like that. If this tutorial helped, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. It helps the channel out a ton and is completely free. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.